said, well, I ain't need to do I told him, I said, come on, we'll go outside. I went out there 15 minutes. I didn't go back in. I, I was wheezing and really struggling. I told him, I said, we got to go in. The girls, I can't take this today. It's, it's, it's this bad yes. either. What's it like up there? I know it. Well, they showed a picture of New York. You know, I showed that the other day. They said it's the worst air they've ever had. Well, since 1960. Uh, this was New York City this week. And they said it's the worst since the 60s. That looks unhealthy, to say the least. Well, look at that. Now we got a couple of minutes here. We got Jerry listening. Did you say Ruby's listening? She she hasn't given me confirmation, but she said she would. But Jean's listening. Jean and Jerry, the J so far tuning in. I'm gonna go ahead and write her down. What? Go ahead and write Ruby down because she's probably doing something for her dad and can't. She listens with her AirPods and probably doesn't have the phone with her to respond. G and David Vanderstoop. That's online so far. Got about two minutes. Don't let me forget to get a picture afterwards. Ruby took the book with her to Arkansas so she can keep up. Sharon, did you ever get your hard drive in? No hurry on it. We got you safely covered. That's just going to be a little extra. Yeah, I, I wanted to do a full backup before I did any updating. Well, just give me a call. I'll... I'm pretty much that. about 45 seconds I'll just go ahead and wait till it's officially time so others can tune in unless Sandy comes well Ruby's not here to teach tonight I'll sing a little longer that was Mark not me It's only 10 seconds. I hope ever, since we met Sunday night, we had a real rough weather system come through. Alice is listening. We had a little over five inches of rain at home and really, really poured. Lost a few trees. We lost some metal in the house. Mark, thankfully, the next day came over and replaced it, and I really appreciate it. It was way it's something, obviously, I couldn't do, but... And a lot of damage. Jerry and I went to Bowling Green Day, cut back through Shady Land area where I used to preach. Uh, we saw, I'd call it major damage. And uh, the, the laying of the trees really looked like it had, they had been twisted, so maybe some tornadic activity. Uh, and, of course, Hardin County did have an EF2 tornado. That was confirmed. Ruby's in Arkansas. Her dad's home from the hospital. When she got there Sunday night, he recognized her and called her by name and so he is home but he's doing I guess I would just sum it up as okay the best he can do but he's stable and so Ruby might come home Friday she said and uh, that will give her Saturday to I guess her recover and then Sunday we have services and Sunday night is Hodgenville and then next Wednesday night we'll be worshiping at Horse Cave so it'll be good for Ruby I hope she can be here for that but if not that of course, she can listen. If her dad were to take a turn for the worse, she will stay out there. But right now, he's pretty stable and looks like it might. Of course, he always has, I think, a couple people with him anyway. Always. He can't, you know, be alone. Are they going to be able to do 
That's not been mentioned. Uh, Sharon was asking us about his blocked ar arteries. That wasn't even discussed. He is going, Ruby, if she comes home Friday, will go back in one week, prob most likely, because he's got cancer surgery on his head on Monday, July 10th, and she can stay a little longer. And so he's got that and really needs one more, and they haven't even addressed the other. He's having, I'd never heard of this, he can't even swallow water. So they're having to put something in his water to make it thick, about like honey or nectar. And so that's, uh, and you know, he can't drink water. And Linda Sloan's listening. So he's really having a lot of trouble getting choked with things. They had to do a swallow test. So have you had to do that, Sherry, or I guess you knew? You're familiar with it, though. Oh, um, the swallow test? No, I couldn't swallow water and had to thicken it. I thought you'd said, yeah. Well, you were shaking your head, and I thought maybe you were familiar with it. And, uh, but I'd never heard that it had to thicken water to be able to drink it. Thank you, there's a lot. But he's really just having a lot of trouble with things. He can't go to the restroom by himself. It takes two to take him. They he really likes like frappuccino drinks, uh, chocolate and coffee, but he'll drink and then drop it part of the way. Just can't hardly hold. He's really he's not bed fast, but very close. But you know, doing okay considering. Uh, Ruby, if there's any update, let me know. She she's he'll be ninety in February. So eighty nine. Seems like he's gone down quickly, but different people age differently. He just worked hard. And I know after his wife died, it, you know, no doubt took a lot. As a matter of fact, I think Ruby said he was calling for her the other night or calling her name. Continue to remember Alice as well with her pain, and uh, hopefully all goes well with her and her surgery. And uh, Lauren, of course, you know, they've discovered a mass in her back, Jerry's oldest daughter. I was picturing it lower back, but it's not. It's up near the neck. She's having to wear a neck brace, a mass in her back. They still don't know if it's cancerous or not. They said it didn't look like it was going to be, but they haven't got the biopsy back yet. She texted me a while ago, said she really been a scary and emotional week. She's really concerned. And, of course, she's quite young, born in 92. And so do keep, she said she... Really appreciated all the prayers. I haven't heard from her, but she said she'd be listening tonight. I told her I would remind everyone to keep her in prayer. That she uh, is really concerned about this. Jerry's concerned for her. Jerry hasn't been feeling good at all. He does have a, he went back to the doctor yesterday. He's got another urinary tract infection. So he is really having some issues and just not feeling well at all. So keep them all in prayer. Have I left out anyone? Maybe I'll know, but hopefully Ruby can come home. Uh, Stuart's eating lima beans. No, listening from Lima, Ohio. I didn't have that quite right. <laughs> Glad Stuart's tuning in. But hopefully Ruby can come home Friday, but it'll only be for about a week, and she will go back. She's mostly coming home just to probably, well, so she can go to Hodgenville and then Horse Cave and probably rejuvenate and wash some clothes and go back out there, though she can wash there. Her mother had a washing machine exactly like ours, so it's no trouble. And it was just pure chance. We didn't know it. Anyone else? Quite a few announcements there regarding Ruby's dad, but he is home. And so he's sleeping in the living room. They moved his hospital bed right in the living room, just a little easier and everything. And the doctor really recommended so he could see sun up and sunset because he's really getting confused, and they said that would help to know the time of day. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Don't let me leave anyone out, and certainly remember Lauren in prayer, very concerned with this Mass. Number 611. Hope everyone fared well in the storms. We had a little bit of damage, a few more trees down the farm, a little bit of damage to the house that Mark fixed the next day, and I'm very grateful. But uh, we're minor. We drove to Bowling Green today through Smith's Grove and down that area and back up through Edmondson County. People had major damage. Massive trees falling on houses and so a lot of damage. 
number 611. Just in case anyone's tuning in late, don't forget that Sunday night we'll be meeting at LaRue County. Next Wednesday night we will not be meeting here. Uh, I'll go ahead and pass out the lessons, but we'll be at Horse Cave next Wednesday night for the summer series. Number 611. Walking in sunlight all of my journey Over the mountains, through the deep air Jesus has said, I'll never forsake thee Promise divine that never can fail Heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight Flooding my soul with Glory divine, hallelujah, I am rejoicing, singing His praises, Jesus is mine. Shadows around me, shadows above me, never conceal my Savior and God. He is the light, in Him is no darkness. Ever I'm walking close to His side. Heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight, flooding my soul with glory divine. Hallelujah. I am rejoicing, singing His praises, Jesus is mine. In the bright sunlight, ever rejoicing, pressing my way to mansions above, singing His praises, gladly I'm walking. In sunlight, sunlight of love, heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight, flooding my soul with glory divine. You know, I didn't plan this. Number 548. Uh, when it was in the old book, it was 528, I think. Uh, Sherry, didn't you sort of like this song, The Lily of the Valley? I remember you requesting it a few times. So fitting, it's Sherry's birthday today. 548. <coughs> Yesterday was Lauren's, Jerry's daughter, and yesterday was mine and Ruby's 37th wedding anniversary. She was in Fayetteville, Arkansas. Till, they didn't release him from hospital until probably 6 p.m. And she was in Fayetteville, and I texted her. I said, sort of ironic, you're in Fayetteville, and you and I were there. That's where we went after our wedding. I said, you and I were, I said, you were there 37 years ago tonight, as was I. She said, oh, I had forgotten you were there, too. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, Ruby is witty. <laughs> but that's been 37 years. But it is so ironic. Back around. 548. And then we'll ask Larry to lead our prayer. I have found a friend in Jesus. He's everything to me. He's the fairest of thousand to my soul. The lily of the valley. In him alone I see. All I need to cleanse and make me fully whole. In sorrow he's my comfort, in trouble he's my stay. He tells me every care on him to roll. He's the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. Oh, he all my griefs hath taken, and all my sorrows borne. In temptation he's my strong and mighty tower. 
I have all for him forsaken, and all my idols tore. From my heart, and now he keeps me by his power. Though all the world forsake me, and Satan tempt me so, Jesus, I shall safely reach the goal. He's the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. He will never, never leave me, nor yet forsake me here. While I live by faith and do his blessed will. Ah, uh -huh, while a fair about me, I've nothing now to fear. With his manna he my hungry soul shall fill. Then sweeping up to glory to see his blessed face where rivers of delight shall ever roll. He's the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. Would you bow with me? <coughs> Our gracious Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for this beautiful day that you've given us and we're so thankful father that we have the freedoms to assemble in your name here uh, at the closing of this day to worship and serve you to sing these songs of praise unto you to go to you in prayer and beseech you for the uh, many blessings uh, father that you have available for us if we will ask and live according to your will and father we are so thankful for the the many blessings that uh, you give us each day and and the uh, things that we have father because we know that we are so richly blessed we're so thankful father for this great country in which we live and the many freedoms we enjoy that we're able to serve you without fear of mankind we're able father to uh, assemble in your name without fear of mankind we're so thankful father that we can can serve you and that we can voice our opinions uh, on your behalf and Father we pray that we, as we go through life that we would always be strong and courageous in our service to you and that we would always strive each and every day to serve you better. We're so thankful Father for the good health that we enjoy this evening but we know that there are those who are not with us because of illness father we pray that you'd be with them we, we pray father that you would be with ruby's dad and if it be your will father that he would uh, 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 be better and, and be able to uh, to serve you and to live for you we pray father that you would be with ruby as she attends to her dad that, that she would, uh, would keep her safe father and then when she travels back home that she would give her safety we pray, Father, that you'd be with Lauren, and uh, if it be your will, Father, that the mass she had would not be cancerous, but something that can be healed. And, Father, we pray that you would be with her and that you would bless her and heal her. pray, Father, that you'd be with Jerry, uh, that he would soon be back to normal. We pray, Father, that we, we pray, Father, that you would be with each of us as we uh, serve you, that you would help us to always look to you, Father, for the strength and the guidance that we need, knowing that many times we... Uh, fail to uh, do those things that would be pleasing to you but we know father that uh, as you're there to strengthen us and, and to help us as we go through life that we can't overcome those things and we pray father that you would uh, always be with us and, and, and keep us in the hollow of your hand we pray father that you would forgive us for our sins we know that we uh, even though we strive father each and every day to be more Christ like we know that Satan is always there to tempt us and draw us away. And Father, we know that there are many times that we do uh, fall short of what's expected of us. But Father, we pray that you would be there and, and uh, forgive us and that you would always be merciful to us, Father, because we know that many times we're unable to uh, even uh, guide our own footsteps, Father, that we're unable to, to go and do those things that uh, we should and father we pray that you'd be with us and keep us on the right path keep us on the old path the good path the straight path father that leads to heaven and father we pray that you would pray father that you'd be with 
uh, each of us this evening that we can study your word, that we can dismiss the things of this world from our minds and from our hearts and meditate upon your word and your word only. We pray, Father, that you would be with us and uh, that the uh, service this evening would be pleasing to you. And we pray that it would. Pray, Father, that you would be with those who uh, are traveling, that you would be with Stuart as he travels, Father, the nation's highways, that you'd be with him and give him safety. Give us each safety as we go from here and help us uh, through this week, Father, to uh, be strong and to serve you each day and to strive, Father, to to uh, live closer to you and strive, Father, to do those things that will be pleasing to you. Strengthen us and forgive us of our sins and find heaven and save us. It's our prayer in Christ's name. Amen. Number 443. 443. <clears throat> Lauren is listening. She said, I forgot to text, but I'm listening. So. How precious is the book divine by inspiration given. Bright as a lamp is precept shine to God my soul to have. Holy book divine, precious treasure mine. Lamp to my feet and a light to my way to guide me safely home. It sweetly cheers my drooping heart In this dark veil of tears Light to my life is still in part And quells my rising fear Holy Book Divine Precious treasure mine Lamp to my feet and a light to my way To guide me safely home This lamp through all the tedious night Of life shall guide my day Till I behold the clear light Of an eternal day Holy Book Divine Precious treasure mine, lamp to my feet and a light to my way to guide me safely home. I think I'll just stop there with the songs because sorry, 20 after, it's a long chapter tonight. So let's have our classes. All right, we're on 1 Timothy 6. I will pass out lessons afterwards, but you won't need those for two weeks. Let me get this up and going. A computer rebooted. I think power had been off at the building for a little bit during everything that was happening with all the storms and everything. All right, let's go over the... Uh, questions. Number one, Mike. Okay, number two, Larry. All right, number three, Adam. Verse seven, for we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. Okay. Number four, Kathy. Number five, Sand is in class. Stuart. Mark. Okay, 
Okay, number six. Sharon? Okay, number seven, Andrew. Verse 15, which in his times he so he shall so show who is the blessed and the only authentic, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Number eight, Sherry. Verse 16, who only hath immortality dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, whom no man hath seen. Number nine, no Chris's. Elaine. Verse 19, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life. All right, number 20 has to be Stuart or me. Stuart. All right, 1 Timothy 6. This is a chapter that's loaded with things and uh, just can't do it justice in 25 or so minutes. I saw you really looking, Kathy. I was trying to thank Patrick, Kelly, and Everly. Which one couldn't you think of? Everly. I had to rack my mind a moment there, too. It didn't take too long. We'll get on right through this. And uh, let as many servants as are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor, that the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. This was in the day when people were servants and even slaves. The, the Greek word here actually is slaves. Uh, doulos is the singular. And... Uh, it could be, you know, more of a servant, a bondman, or you could be, you know, un not wanting to be there, a lot of slaves. But if you were a slave and, so, and, a, and a Christian, you needed to count your masters worthy of honor. You were to respect them, give them honor, you know, not certainly not do against them or speak against them, that the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. And that would work with employers and employees today. I know all of you, so I'm working types of situations I've never worked in, Walmart, factories, at Dart. I know you probably have never heard anyone speak against a supervisor or boss, and uh, maybe you have. Patrick's looking like his eyes are bugging out. Well, people do that all the time. And if you're a Christian, you're not to speak. And uh, someone other day, this isn't about this, but someone other day asked me, said something rather negative about president or former president doesn't matter neither here nor there and they were saying don't you think that was bad i said well i'm not going to say anything negative the bible says we're to do five things for our leaders honor you know and prayer prayer and supplication were all positive but what if they do something bad i said i'll leave that to others to say it's not my place and uh, i think that's in this situation here I'm not going to speak against someone who is over me because, you know, in, in a work situation. Because if you do, you're blaspheming God, His name, and His doctrine, you know, the, the Word of God. And they that have believing masters, if your master is a Christian as well, let them not despise them because they're brethren, but rather do them service because they're faithful and beloved partakers of the benefit. These things teach and exhort. Really, if you're, a, if you're a master or employer, you could even say, but it's really master here, uh, was in the Lord, you were to go the extra mile in helping them and doing for them. I'm reading through a little fast because it is such a long chapter, and it's so rich and deep. These things teach and exhort. But if you have questions or comments, feel free. If any man teach otherwise besides what he has said here, and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness. So this is this is rather long thought here, 
But someone teaches otherwise, you don't consent to wholesome words. We need to have wholesome words, good words, even the words of the Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness. You know the uh, the the, word, the the teachings that are that are godly. That's the kind of words you need to have. If anyone teach otherwise and does otherwise, really consent not to this. He is proud, knowing nothing. I just a side note here. I think of this so often when I see people ranting and raving and I, I don't watch them but I do watch a lot of YouTube and a lot of times I see a thumbnail people ranting against things that are good even sometimes against spiritual things and I think about how little that they know and it saddens me because of the destruction awaiting for them if there's no repentance he is proud knowing nothing but doting about questions and strifes of words Whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings. Uh, there are people that just talk and di dispute and argue all the time. There's so much in the Old Testament, especially Psalm or Proverbs, about having few words and you know refraining your lips. And you know, uh, he that opened wide his mouth shall have destruction. There's so much like that. So he really talks about people. You know, we don't want to be one of these that go about. This doting about says is obsessed with disputes and strifes, you know, arguments. Where I've come with envy, strife, railings, evil surmises. So don't be a person who is argumentative. I, I do really try to follow that. I think a lot it's easier as I've gotten older because I'm just too tired to fool with it. If someone told me the sun is cold, I would probably say, is it? And let it go. I don't care. And, you know, if, if they told me, well, this is now winter. Okay. It doesn't matter. I just let them think they're right, and I, and they, it is in Australia, but you know, uh, I don't feel obligated to correct because of Proverbs. Answer not a fool according to his folly. But then we're told, answer a fool according to his folly. So sometimes we need to. But I'd say most times we don't. This is still, if you continue, this was a long sentence, uh, at least three verses here. If you have this question and strife or arguing, it brings envy, strife, railings, which is, uh, you know, really a rough argument. Almost even fighting, evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds, and destitute of the truth. That's the problem with most of the world. People are destitute of the truth. They don't have it. They don't have, I saw... I, this was when mom was living because I know what I saw and I happened to walk by her television and she couldn't hear it so she always had captions on and one of those morning she always watched she liked Good Morning America and stuff but it often stay on a little while to some of those uh, morning shows with various women on there you know very argumentative very liberal and one of them was talking about same gender she said does the Bible even say that that lifestyle is wrong homosexuality that's what she said I hate to even use the word but nothing wrong with it but she says that the Bible even say that's wrong and the other said yes she said huh, that shows how much I know about the Bible she just sort of laughed it off destitute of the truth supposing that gain is godliness from such withdraw thyself we don't need to keep company with these people and so people that are argumentative destitute of the truth corrupt minds they go after money. There's nothing wrong with money itself. If you've read ahead in the chapter, you know what, what's the problem with money. It's not money is evil. It's love of money. i got to have money they required at Walmart. They required at BP and Hardyville. So I've got to have some. But I can't love it. Withdraw yourself from these people. Ruby and I couldn't have planned this. We had to. We both got gas Sunday morning because I knew she was getting ready to go to Arkansas, so I stopped and filled up her. We both parked, and I filled up the truck and filled up her car. I put in $18.08, and her car put in $18.09. <laughs> Couldn't have planned it that way. But from such withdraw thyself. Here's such a key. If you want great gain in this life, have these two things. But godliness with contentment is great gain. So be godly. This is the word for godly here. Reverence and respect, you know, toward God. Devotion, godly living. Be godliness with contentment. 
that's being satisfied. It actually says it backwards. There has the great near the front. Greeks did not have to order their sentence in any particular order. But being uh, content, just happy of not wanting or you know anything else, just or any other position, you're just content with what you have. If you're that way and live godly, you have great gain. You know, it's almost a paradox. I remember when I was young, girl, <laughs> young period, not now. You know, sometimes it's a little hard to get things. You think, well, you know, you want a certain vehicle or maybe nowadays computers and such like. But ironically, when you get old enough, I'm not saying that I necessarily like this, but you end up having either enough money to get it or you could certainly borrow it. And then you don't even what? You don't even want it anymore because you've got everything you need. I don't need another vehicle. This one's nearly 20 years old, but it's not even 100,000. And, you know, I don't need another house. I don't need more land. You know, why would I need more? I can only drive one vehicle. I can only sleep in one bed at night. Be content with what you have. That's, that's a phrase in the Bible as well. As a matter of fact, I ought to probably look at that. And be content with such things as you have, for he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee, so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man shall do to thee. Be content. This is what I was quoting there. Be content with such things as you have. All right? Be godly and be content. You've got great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it's certain we can carry nothing out. I've done a lot of funerals through the years, hundreds, no doubt. And uh, I just remember when doing work, and I did so much computer work for Brooks down here. I was also their standby computer or preacher for people who didn't have uh, preachers that wanted somebody when they died. And he, he, we were talking one day. He said, you know, it's sort of interesting. He said, there's one thing. You can get so many different kind of caskets. But there's one thing I've never bought that's inside. Pockets. No reason for pockets in a casket. You're not taking anything with you. I mean, you came in with nothing. That's how you're going to go out. And having food and raiment, let us therewith, let us be therewith content. Well, I can look now. Every one of y'all have raiment. Well, maybe Hobbes, but he's got his own special from the Lord. And if anyone's listening, Hobbes is actually a dog visiting with us tonight. And uh, but food and raiment. You know, we got a newborn here, Everly. Is it really true? You come into this world with nothing, don't you? I mean, just you. That's the way she's going to leave. Nothing will be taken. It's all left behind. Having food and raiment, let us be there with content. It doesn't even mention housing here. And I find that interesting. Because, you know, really these are the basics. You've got to have food. You've got to have some covering and cold weather. A lot of people live without a house. And probably a lot of the people he was addressing, because he's talked about masters, they probably didn't have their own home. They probably had to live with others. They probably lived in servant quarters and the such like. So if you've got food and raiment, so as I look, every one of y'all have raiment. And I know all of you have plenty of food to do with. So be content. But they that will be rich, if you want to be rich, fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. Perdition is being eternally lost. But there's nothing wrong with rich itself. A lot of people are born with nothing, but they're born into wealth, though, that they have while they're here. Uh, but if you desire, if you're working to be rich, you're going to fall into many foolish and hurtful lusts. It's going to drown you. And rich is relative. All of us are vastly rich, no doubt, compared to, I'd say, most of Middle Africa, probably most of Latin America. We're probably very poor compared to most of Hollywood. And so it's all relative. But if you desire to be rich, it's going to bring destruction. For the love of money is the root of all evil. It's not money. Money is whatever we make it. Uh, it happens to be, for most societies, gold is a standard. 
they can be a lot of things. Uh, certainly in my lifetime, you know, people on farms, it was really valuable and people would sometimes trade what? Stock or animals. They'd trade out work without any cash ever passing hands at all. So money is whatever we make it. There are some things far more valuable than others. There, there's metals that are much rarer than gold, but gold is a standard. But if you love that, it's the root of all evil, meaning it can bring anything. It can bring lying, cheating, murder, adultery. It is like a root that all evil will spring up from for the love of money. Money is not bad. God created gold. He created anything that could be used as currency. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. We don't, we're only halfway through the chapter, so I'm going to continue on. But thou, O man of God, flee these things. So man of God, it doesn't mean we can't have things as people of God, but the pursuing of them, loving them. But thou, O man of God, flee these things. Here's what we need to follow. And follow after righteousness, goodness, faith, love, patience, meekness. The world doesn't look at it that way. You go to the bank, try to borrow money, they will want collateral that you can put up against it. Well, what do you have? I've got righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. That won't get you alone. Not in this society, and that's understandable. But these are the things. And that could make a sermon in and of itself. Fight the good fight of faith. I've heard this a lot at funerals when Christian people have died. They fought the good fight. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. That's like grabbing it. Eternal life is there. Grab hold and don't let go. Whereunto thou art also called and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. So lay hold on eternal life. Don't let it slip out of your hands. I'm sure you've told someone or you've been told, hang on for whatever it is. It could be riding a motorcycle. It could be doing anything. Getting ready to parachute out of an airplane. Well, doors open, hold on. Well, I'm not going to probably be in that situation. But hang on to eternal Lay hold on eternal life. I give thee charge in the sight of God who quickeneth all things. That's that literally makes alive. It says give life to all things. And before Christ Jesus, who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession. Of course, this was during his trial when he was beat and all going on. He witnessed a good confession before Pontius Pilate. He didn't give in, you know, to, to sin or, or, you know, not denying who he was. He, uh, you know, held two things that were righteous. That thou keep this commandment without spot, unbreakable, unrebukable, I'm sorry, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. You keep th this commandment. You know, all the things he's saying here. Without spot, unrebukable, without reproach, or be without blame, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, Timothy wasn't going to live till then. And we don't know if we will or not yet. But keep these things all of our life. Which in his times he shall show, you know, whenever the time comes, whenever the Lord is manifest and shown to the world, he's going to show who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and Lord of lords. Now the word potentate, I believe this is the only time this is used in the Bible. Uh, it's actually used for religious leaders as well. And potentate's the only time it's translated this. It's called mighty, and it's called great authority. I'm not sure somebody during the time of King James. I'll be honest, they probably translate this word, since it was translated in 1611, referring to and paying, I feel like maybe even falsely paying homage to whom? Who's called the potentate? The, the Pope is. I wouldn't have translated it that. Not that I'm all knowledge, but that's just not what I would have done uh, because I don't think that's a proper word. King James doesn't always use the best translations because they 
knew what it said, but they tried to err on the side of caution to be true but not to offend the Church of England. It's probably more the Church of England, but probably a lot of Catholic influence. That's why baptism's in the Bible, not immersion, because what was proper popular in that day was like sprinkling or pouring and baptism means an immersion though some translations have that but King James thought we'll just put baptize and that way it's true to the text but no one knows what it means but Jesus is the only one who is the you know the head of all potentate the king of kings and lord of lords who only hath immortality he's the only one that can give eternal life dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, whom no man hath seen nor can see. Now we will see Jesus, but mankind cannot. We have to leave this life. To whom be honor and power everlasting. Amen. I like that. That gives me great comfort. The power of the Lord's eternal. Charge them that are rich in this world. He addresses wealth a lot in this chapter. Charge them that are rich in this world. So if you have a lot, that they be not high-minded nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. That's why it's okay to enjoy what that you have. You know, I'll pause on this a minute. Don't feel guilty if you have more than someone else because it's going to be that way. Even in Jesus' time, like Martha, Mary, and Lazarus seemed to have a lot more than the others uh, that they were able to do with. Some were very poor. And... We need to help others, do good to all men, especially the household of faith. But everything that you have, He's given you to enjoy. Your land, your home, your electronics, your automobile. He doesn't mind us enjoying it, but He doesn't want us to trust in it. I remember seeing years ago, there was a guy in Chicago who died. He absolutely loved his Harley Davidson. He died for some reason. You know what they did with the Harley Davidson? Buried it with him. Take a big casket with him. That'd be an oasis of a good motorcycle, too. Ridiculous. Remember reading about that. They that do good, they that be rich in good works. That So, I'm sorry, I misread it. Don't trust in uncertain riches, but in God, the living God, who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. That they do good. So if you have a lot, if you are wealthy, do good that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate. This means willing to share. You know, you can't give away everything you have or you'd be destitute, but don't be greedy. Three more verses. So whenever you do share, what do you do? Laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come. So whenever you help and do for others, you're in a sense putting it in a savings account. You're laying it up in heaven that they may lay hold on eternal life. O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust. Avoiding, there's so much I'd like to say about this verse, and I'm out of time. Avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science falsely so called. <coughs> Don't pay attention to just profane and vain babbling, idle talk, and opposition of science falsely so called. This word for science is gnosis, which means knowledge. Avoid false knowledge. That's why if I was a Christian young person going to college, I wouldn't want to get a degree in biology or some science or some, some philosophy from a worldly institution because they will teach things against the Bible. It doesn't say, you know, try to be careful with it. It says avoid it. You know, stay away from it. And anything that opposes the Word of God Oppositions of science or knowledge, falsely so called. There's so much. Last verse, which some professing have erred concerning the faith. People go and they learn from worldly institutions, they err concerning the faith. Grace be with ye, with thee. Amen. Okay, I'm out of time. Let me knock on the door, but are there any questions or comments? Then I'll get the lessons here. So 
All right, while we wait for Sandy, is there anything that, any comments? Howdy. Only printed ten. If there's not enough, just what's well, online. Turn, if you will, to number nine hundred nine. There's a fountain free. In a moment, we'll sing a verse of this as our invitation song. There, there's so many good verses to pull lessons from tonight, but I really like this one. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Eternal life is there for all of us, but it's something that you have to grab and take hold of. It's not just going to encompass you, but you have to lay hold on it, certainly by your, by your serving the Lord and living faithfully. But it's there for us to, to lay hold on to. And we do that initially by obeying the Lord, certainly believing on Him, but it goes beyond that. Repentance of our sins, turning from them is what it means, confessing the Lord's name. Baptism, which washes away our sin, and then living faithfully, continually fighting the good fight of faith. We see faith being fought against everywhere. There's sin more and more rampant, and we've got to fight the good fight of faith. And I think it ties together. By doing that, we lay hold on eternal life. If you're here and need to obey, let's sing the first verse of 909 as we stand. There's a fountain free, tis for you and me. Let us haste, oh, haste to its brink. Tis the fount of love from the source above, and He bids us all freely drink. Will you come to the fountain free? Will you come? Tis for you and me. Thirsty soul, hear the welcome call. Tis a fountain open for all. Turn to number 473. Number 473, we'll sing a verse of this and ask Mike to dismiss us. In prayer, continue to remember all the ones we announced at the beginning. Ruby's dad is, is home. Thankfully, Ruby spent two nights in the hospital, and you know you just don't get much sleep there at all. And uh, But he's home, and when I asked how he's doing, she said, well, okay. And, uh, you know, he's just... Uh, but I think stable enough that she may come home Friday for about a week and then head back out for his surgery that he's having. Don't forget, our service is Sunday morning. No services here Sunday evening. It'll be at LaRue County, but it'll be on YouTube. And then next Wednesday evening, no services here. Uh, be speaking at the first of the summer series in Horse K. So I hope everybody can come to both those, but certainly Horse Cave is close. And but both will be on YouTube. YouTube only. Uh, it's just whenever I'm at another place, it's really hard to broadcast from tune in because I have to do it from this internet IP address so it makes it a little more complex is there anything else that needs to be announced remember Lauren of course keep her in prayer that the uh, mass in her back is not cancerous everything be taken care of quickly and easily remember Alice as well with her pain and suffering we pray for Ruby a safe trip home as she travels All right, let's sing 473 then Michael dismisses one verse Safe in the arms of Jesus, save on his gentle breath. There by his love o'ershaded, sweetly my soul shall rest. Heart is the voice of angel, warning a 
song to me over the fields of glory, over the jasper sea. Sing me a Jesus, save on his gentle breath. Thank <laughs> you. 